Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to build a virtual analog sawtooth oscillator using only basic components available in primary. This is one of my favorite oscillators. Uh, I just really like it because it's got a cool architecture that comes with a built-in low-pass filter and it sounds like this. If you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new reactor videos every week. So to start out with, I'm just going to open a copy of EZFFT Analyzer, which is not strictly necessary, but I like to use it because it's just good to uh, have an idea of the spectrum of the oscillators that you're making, especially when you're trying to build something uh, like virtual analog oscillator. Um, so if you don't already have a copy of EZFFT, you can just search the user library for EZFFT. It should be the first thing that comes up. And it's just a um, useful set of spectral tools. So I'm going to put the new oscillator in its own macro and connect that to the analyzer. And I'm going to be working from a diagram today just to make things a little easier. Um, and in the upper left hand corner we have a sine oscillator with uh, phase modulation which does not exist in primary but we can build one easily enough using a ramp oscillator and a sine math module. So first let's make the ramp oscillator run at the frequency of our incoming MIDI data by translating the note pitch into a frequency using the exponential F module. And you can have an amplitude of 1. And we're going to use this to run a sine module. And this is going to be the phase of the sine oscillator. So we can add a value to this, which is going to be our phase modulation, and use the sum to control the sine module. So this is our basic sine oscillator with phase modulation and the phase modulation input is the bottom input of our add module here. Next we see that the sine oscillator can be used as the output for the entire macro. And now we're just going to do some math to supply the phase modulation input. So we're going to add the output of the sine wave multiply it by 0.5 and we'll supply the uh, other add uh, input in just a second here. And then we have this block called z to the negative 1. What this does is it delays a signal by a single period um, at the sample rate. So this is just going to delay, for example, for our project, it's going to delay by 1 44,000 one hundredth of a second. Um, and the output of that can go back into the input of our add module that we left hanging a minute ago. So in core, we have a module called z to the negative 1. In primary, it's called the unit delay. You can find it in the delay section and they act exactly the same. All right, so we're going to multiply the output of this by our value b. And b here is acting as a parameter for our low pass filter basically. It's deciding how much high frequency content we have in our sound. And the output of our multiplication is controlling our phase modulation, as you can see. So that wraps up the basic oscillator. Uh, we still need to create a value for B. Um, we can just use a knob for that. And it's important to get the uh, values correct here. 
Uh, if you have a value of b that's too large, you can have some problems. Uh, the closer it gets to 0, the closer it gets to a sine wave. So I think 0.4 is actually going to be a little too large, and we'll see the result of that in just a moment. Let's just create a simple uh, oscilloscope while we're at it. Uh, we have a ramp oscillator already that we can use to run the X input of an XY module. We can run the Y input off of the output of the macro and turn the type to scope. Um, turn the Y minimum value to negative one. Make some other cosmetic changes, and here we are. So this is where having the um, scope and the frequency analyzer come in helpful. Um, you can see that when we turn B really high, we start to get some kind of interesting results. It's kind of better with a maximum around right here or so. And um, one other thing we can notice is that there's a persistent, um, very low frequency content to our wave right here. Um, no matter how high frequency of our oscillator is playing back at, we still have this very low frequency content. So we can remove this very easily. Let's just hop back into the structure. And I'm going to use a high pass filter, one pole high pass filter. And we just want to remove all the frequency content at like around zero. So we're just going to leave the pitch unconnected. So we're just going to use a uh, pitch value of zero here. And this should help us out substantially. And I'm just going to create a quick envelope so we can listen to the results here. And so you see we no longer have the amplitude peak at the bottom of the frequency range there. All right, so this is Salamander Anagram with reactortutorials.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website. And I'll be back again next week with a new reactor video.